Problems in theoretical probability are easier to deal with than those in the empirical branch because we come up with exact answers. There's no margin of error involved with theoretical probabilities. And the problem is particularly easy in the case where the outcomes in the sample space are equally likely. And when this is the case, and we want to find the probability of a given event, then all we need to do is calculate the uh, number of outcomes in the event and the number of outcomes in the sample space, and then just take the ratio. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, we have an experiment involving coins. We're going to flip three coins. We want to find the probability of each outcome. So in this experiment, let's say we're flipping a, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. Then we get outcomes such as head, 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 or head, tail, head, where the first is the result of the nickel, the second the, is the dime, and the third is the quarter. And so all we need to do is count how many of these outcomes there are. Okay, so the number in the sample space then, and we find this by counting the number of outcomes for each coin, multiplying them together, according to the fundamental principle of counting. And so that gives us 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Okay, and therefore, the probability of any one of these outcomes, let's say the head-tail-head head outcome, meaning head on the nickel, tail on the dime, head on the quarter, is just 1 out of 8. Okay, next example. We draw a five card hand from a standard deck and we want to find the probability that any particular hand is drawn. Let's say the two, three, four, five, six of clubs. Okay, now of course the order in which we draw these cards does not matter. When we draw a hand of cards, we're likely to rearrange them anyway. And because order is not important, then to count the number of hands, we need to use the, the combination number. Okay, so the number of possible hands in this case is going to be C525. Remember this number from uh, chapter 13. And we can find this easily enough using our scientific calculator or graphing calculator. And you remember this button right here is used to find the combination number. So I'm going to go 52, 5, and that gives us the number we're looking for, 2,598,960. Okay, and since we're assuming that each of these hands is equally likely, then the probability of any one of those hands, again, suppose that's the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of clubs, just for definite, is, is 1 over that number. Okay. 